Uh, very good morning, guys. Uh, so today we are trying to focus on, uh, you know, I mean, uh, mastering search processes, uh, processing language. And we are mostly focusing on grouping and correlation related queries. And so most, most probably uh, we'll be looking at transactions, sub searches, append, append calls and append pipe. Uh, so, so before we get started uh, with the with our demonstration, uh, you know, so uh, there is also I am uh, occasionally also uploading some of the pre-signed URL links, uh, uh, you know, for for the subscribers uh, who wish to download uh, material cr cr uh, crafted for uh, you know uh, Splunk Fundamentals one and two. Uh, so I assume most of you already have that, but if you do not, uh, I mean, uh, so. Uh, the only uh, downside is that particular URL, you know, is, is expiring and I mentioned that in the description as well. So without any delay, you know, we get started with our demonstration. Yeah. Uh, uh, before we get started, uh, you know, I just wanted to let you know. Uh, so, for example, when we are in the new Splunk environment, uh, you know, sometimes we are not aware of how many indexes are basically present in our environment, you know. Uh, so, just a quick tip, you know, if, for example, if you really want to explore how many indexes are basically residing in, uh, in your environment to start with, you know, uh, you can explore uh, more uh, what kind of the data is being stored in that particular indexes and explore mo most of the fields and then the data you are interested in for your business requirement so uh, this is the quick tip how you can uh, list all the indexes maybe internal as well as other indexes as well so let's have a look at that so for example okay so let's try to list all the indexes uh, so for example and uh, let's also try to list all the internal indexes as well uh, so for example uh, okay uh, this is done and maybe Okay, and the fields, sorry for that index, okay. Uh, so for example, you know, I mean, uh, this basically helps to retrieve the entire list of whatever the index is and then you can randomly, you know, uh, uh, run the query for maybe 30 seconds or 45 seconds uh, so that some kind of the data is getting uploaded in your search uh, UI console so that you can have a look at the raw data and you try to identify the important fields in one particular index and you can start uh, exploring, you know, how you can basically value add or, you know, what is basically uh, you know uh, intended for your business requirement and so this is how we can start exploring the various indexes okay uh, so uh, th that's the thing and uh, you can also try to do some other stuff also for example you know uh, i try to learn more about the what kind of the source types uh, you know so how the beta how the data is basically getting ingested into our splunk environment it could be anything right uh, so for example it could be monitoring of our you know directories on the forwarder as well which is the uh, one of the major you know i mean uh, way of doing that and uh, or whether you are you are basically uh, utilizing the http event collector or or for for that matter you know you uh, or windows event log forwarding so you can also try to explore you can learn about you know the source types as well it might give you some kind of the information so for example uh, so uh, however this particular query will not give you the entire uh, comprehensive list of the indexes uh, but you will have the visibility you know what kind of the indexes and uh, you can have a look look at your source types as well so for example where you know source uh, source type is equal to uh, star by let's say index uh, source and source type mm. sorry for that uh, source type uh, so for example you know and uh, you can run that particular query for maybe 24 hour duration that is enough because uh, we are just trying to get the basic uh, you know idea uh, how does it look like so for example this will give you the a little bit of the visibility you know uh, how uh, how we are basically ingesting data in our splunk environment and what are the source types basically so it will it might give you some kind of the visibility right so uh, maybe uh, sort minus so it basically helps uh, in learning the environment so uh, that is how you know so uh, in, in, uh, in in this particular case it is a test environment so uh, we have uploaded the data from the tutorial data as well uh, so okay so without any delay you know we, we will get ourselves started with the uh, you know uh, uh, the transaction commands 
so tr- I think we uh, most of us are already familiar with this particular, you know, I mean, uh, transaction command. It's it's basically used to group all the uh, events, you know, uh, all the events, you know, which which are uh, which are having the similar kind of the fields. Maybe you know, in our case, uh, uh, we will anyways be exploring that. So just give me a second. Yeah, so so, so uh, let's see. So transaction command is basically used to you know group the events into the you know uh, with the similar fields. So for example, let's take an example of J session ID here and uh, J session ID, uh, and we will try to uh, list that. Uh, because uh, if this is my test environment, right? So there is uh, uh, no real time data. That is the reason, you know, I have uploaded data, you know, maybe a little uh, while ago. So that is the reason I am uh, basically use all time. And and this is a test environment, but you can use it because your environment most probably will be having a real time data. Uh, so most probably, you know, I uh, just would like to emphasize on some of the stuff, uh, you know. So for example, when we are using J session ID, so you can see that all the events will be having the same uh, J session ID. For example, your J session ID is ending with 271. And similarly, you can have a look at a second, uh, you know, consecutive event as well. Uh, if I were to run this particular command in the verbose mode, uh, because I would like to let you know that there are some of the fields which are getting generated uh, if, if we are running the transaction command and, uh, and we would like to at least have a glance on that particular stuff uh, so that we will know that. So you can see that you know, when we run the uh, duration command, uh, sorry, transaction command, these are the fields which are getting generated, right? Duration is one of them and the event count is also one of them. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to emphasize on that, uh, you know, so we can also try to uh, run the uh, transaction command, uh, you know, I mean, for example, for all the raw data or raw events, you know, which have the two uh, fields in common. So we can, uh, we, so in this particular example, J session ID and the client IP. Uh, so it will give uh, the results for all the it, it, it is trying to basically group all the events which does have both the fields in common J session ID and the client IP. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, till the time the data is getting loaded, uh, because I still run in the verbose mode, that is the uh, thing, it is taking little bit of the time. Uh, so you can again emphasize, you know, obviously the J session ID will remain the same and also the IP address, right? Uh, so uh, just one more thing I just wanted to emphasize, uh, you know, with the transaction, we can also pass on some of the arguments, uh, for example, if, if we can recollect max span. Um, so max span is one of the argument we can make a basically use of it. Uh, so max span basically uh, tells you know I mean uh, the, the difference uh, between the you know the time uh, between uh, the you know the first event and the last event should not be extended. Uh, for example, I can mention 10 seconds here or you can mention 300 seconds here or maybe five minutes for that matter, right? So in that way it, it might help. We can also pass on some other arguments like you know max pause as well. So for example, there should not be a dif- uh, maximum difference of more than five seconds, uh, you know, in, in, in the in the events which we are trying to retrieve. So we can also use that. And then there are some, some other arguments we can make a use of, you know, I mean, uh, 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 so for example, starts with and the ends with. So anyways, we are trying to look at that particular demonstration. But before that, you know, uh, so for example, uh, let's say uh, in, uh, we are only trying to retrieve the events, uh, you know, uh, for which the duration is more than 15 seconds, you know, so maybe uh, this particular command might help. So duration, uh, duration is greater than equal to 15 seconds. Uh, because I already know from the raw data that, you know, uh, 15 seconds is the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the most, uh, you know, largest duration uh, for, for our events. Uh, so let's try to retrieve uh, so for example, if, if we are trying to exe- execute this particular query, it will give all the events, you know, which has the duration of greater than or equal to 15 seconds. Uh, so most probably we only have three events in our raw data for that matter. And we can also, you know, try to, for example, a, a table or list that particular thing in a tabulated format. So for example, uh, let's say session ID. Uh, apart from that duration and maybe uh, time, let's say time, okay. Uh, and let's run the command in the fast mode so that it might not take much time. 
so so this is how uh, basically uh, you know we are trying to retrieve uh, whatever whatever the data we are interested in and we are trying to filter out that da uh, data based on the duration as a field and we we focused on that this is one of the field which which got generated which when we are trying to run the you know uh, transaction as a command so let us look at some other examples as well you know so so for example if if you are really interested in you know i mean uh, what is the maximum duration so you can also run this particular command uh, you know i mean so max duration in in our case i think it's 15 seconds uh, but just to give you an overall idea so this is how it is and uh, we will also be covering one more uh, scenario for that so uh, let's try to uh, group the event based on both the fields uh, j session id as well as client ip and we will also be looking at uh, some of the uh, arguments we can pass on uh, while using transaction command so let's call it as you know uh, action action is equal to view uh, so I am quite familiar with the what kind of the raw data uh, you know it it has in our environment. So uh, you know so uh, obviously it does require a little bit of the familiarity before we can really you know pass on some of the good arguments and we can use uh, so for example action is equal to uh, purchase. So uh, we are basically trying to retrieve all the events basically which does have you know action is equal to view and action is equal to purchase all the events which uh, which basically uh, give us a glimpse that uh, or maybe resembling the successful purchase uh, on the user portal for that matter. Uh, so let's just try to uh, basically you know I mean uh, see uh, try to basically uh, retrieve all the raw data events. yeah so so uh, maybe i mean for example you know definitely uh, you will be able to see uh, so for example you know the action action is equal to view you can see here and uh, the raw data should also have action is equal to you know the purchase uh, so this is how our raw data so we we do have both the event or both both the you know action is equal to view and purchase in our raw data and uh, we are trying to filter out that data and we are basically trying to retrieve the data in uh, you know retrieve the data about the events you know which is basically resembling, resembling a successful purchase so it's uh, one of the example uh, so, so so hopefully uh, you know uh, so i will be moving on uh, to the some other stuff like for example now we will be learning about these a uh, little bit about these sub searches uh, so uh, you know uh, just give me a second uh, so before uh, we navigate to our uh, the second topic you know which is sub search uh, so just important thing about the sub search is you know uh, so sub search is uh, you know again is one particular you know SPL query uh, which executes uh, prior to that of the main search so one of the important point to remember and the second thing is you know the sub search uh, will always be enclosed within the square brackets and it will always be uh, starting with some kind of the generating command uh, so in our case you know we might be looking at search as a, one of the generating command and the other commands could be you know the input lookup uh, uh, something of that sort and there might be other generating commands as well uh, so let's start with the sub search and uh, so before uh, you know before uh, before I try to demonstrate about the sub search uh, maybe uh, you know I uh, I just would like to give you uh, what kind of the scenario we are looking at uh, so that we will understand better uh, what we are basically trying to do with the help of the sub search okay so one minute index is equal to main maybe source type uh, source type is equal to access combined okay just uh, uh, so uh, basically you know uh, what I am interested in I just would like to know uh, which, which is the product ID which has the minimum number of the count against that or maybe you know uh, uh, one particular product ID which is you know which is purchased very least uh, in our data so uh, so what happens is uh, first of all I am running a query in order to identify that particular product ID uh, which has a minimum number of account against that I uh, product ID okay so stats account by product ID product ID uh, product ID and because uh, we are trying to look at one of the product ID which is has the least number of the purchase or least number of the count against it uh, uh, resembling the same thing in our context so sort and if I look at you know I mean product uh, product one minute sort count uh, 
uh, yeah so i think uh, if you are able to see uh, yeah so for example if you are able to see uh, uh, you know there is uh, the count there is a least count against the very first product id uh, so in the very first search i am just trying to identify which is the product id which has the uh, you know the least number of uh, the record or the count against it and we, and therefore you know we can also conclude uh, this is one of the product which has a least number of the purchases uh you know against it uh, something of that sort uh so now what happens is um, uh, so for example now i am interested in basically fetching the data about this particular product id in our raw data so what happens is uh, now i make a note of this particular product id which is nothing but this one so uh, let's copy that if i will paste it here uh you know and uh, maybe the product id uh, when we know the field the recommended best practices to you know uh, for example you give the product id as well so so in the very first query i try to identify what is the product id which has the least count against it and then we are trying to fetch uh, the corresponding uh, raw data events associated with the uh, our product id in question so for example uh, splunk has basically received 90 events which is corresponding to the product id which is you know uh, which has a least number of the count associated with that uh, so so what happens is uh, we have basically run two searches as of now uh, the first search is to identify what is the product id with the least number of the count and second once we have identified that then we have given uh, that particular you know we have used that particular product id in our main search Uh, so how can we do that how how can we accomplish this particular purpose by using our uh, sub searches so we can do that uh, let's try to look you know how we can do that so for example uh, so one minute so uh, with the help of the sub search uh, let's try to identify which is the product id basically uh, you know uh, so as 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 we uh, uh, discussed about that you know uh, uh, the sub search always uh, start from the generating command so let's say index is equal to uh, obviously main sorry for that main and our source type is equal to nothing but the same and okay so uh, this is uh, okay and uh, for example stats count by product id so in our uh, sub search we are basically trying to identify which is the product id has the least number of the count against it okay so maybe i can sort this uh, sort from the uh, sort one count and i am only interested in the product id as a field so i can also uh, you know uh, mention this product id okay so this is my sub search uh, so so in the sub search basically we are trying to uh, uh, retrieve the data for the product id which has a least number of the count against it and uh, and the main search is basically retrieving an event uh, from from our raw data corresponding to this particular product id which has the least count so let us try to execute that particular search and uh, and try to see whether it works Uh, yeah so it has worked as intended we can see the 90 events corresponding to the product id which has the least number of the events in our raw data and and therefore might be you know we are interested in this particular field because this might be the product id uh, which is uh, you know uh, has a least number of the purchases against it and therefore you would like to investigate more you know i mean what is wrong with this, uh, this particular product and all or something of that sort Uh, so uh, so i think i hope uh, this particular you know demonstration might help you understand you know uh, what is the purpose of the sub searches and how does this work uh, so i just try to construct a simple scenario around that so that uh, you know i i will be able to comprehend you uh, in a better way uh, so okay so let let us move on to the now the other topics you know so maybe some kind of the correlation queries or or the commands you know which basically aggregates uh, the raw data events into the you know and uh, so let us uh, try to look at uh, the example of the append as a command in our demonstration now just give me a second Uh, so before uh, before we basically uh, you know uh, comes into the uh, the use case for the append as a command uh, i just would like to make sure that you are uh, you are, we understand the uh, you know uh, how does the raw data looks like in this test environment because i have uploaded the data uh, uh, you know it's a quite a while ago uh, time chart count 
and maybe span is equal to let's say a day and by maybe source type let's say source type okay uh, actually i'm just trying to uh, show this uh, so that you know uh, whatever the searches i am executing subsequently uh, uh, you know you will know that why i'm basically giving uh, i'm not using the real time data uh, you know uh, for a day or two before or maybe the current day because i have ingested this particular data and it's a, it's of, of it's of course a tutorial data which i have ingested uh, you know maybe a two months ago so you can see that you know i have, I have ingested data maybe in the month of the october uh, so you know what happens is now i am trying to show uh, showcase or maybe demonstrate you uh, the utility of the append as a command so what we are trying to look at is so uh, I will be, uh, you know, so we will be looking at some kind of the events, uh, maybe uh, for only two consecutive days, uh, say, you know, uh, maybe 22nd or 23rd or maybe 26th or 27th. And then, uh, then we will also try to append whatever the results Splunk has given to us uh, with the all time search as well. So what I'm trying to say is, uh, so first of all, we will try to retrieve the data just for the two consecutive days. And then we will also try to append that particular results with all, uh, you know, all time data. So, for example, uh, the, the very first table might give us, you know, the data corresponding to only maybe two consecutive days or maybe for a single day. And in and the same table, we will try to embed or append the data with the all time, uh, which is in, in our case, which is nothing but a week from 22nd of October till 29th of October. Okay. So I think you will get more clarity when I try to execute some of the searches. Just give me a second. Uh, so in our case, uh, uh, we are trying, we are interested in the data, let's say the topmost purchases uh, for the two consecutive days or maybe for a single day. Action is equal to purchase and so OLS is equal to minus uh, 60 D and maybe latest is equal to uh, minus 59 D. So I'm looking at the 24 uh, hours of the duration and uh, we are interested in the uh, purchase uh, purchase, uh, uh, you know, uh, for, for our products, which is which has the topmost purchases in this particular time uh, interval or duration. So let's use stop. So let, let us use stop as a command. And uh, as you know, by default, a uh, top will give the 10 results, uh, but we are only interested in the top two purchases and therefore uh, maybe, uh, you know, product ID. So topmost purchases for the uh, product ID and I also do not want to see the percentages corresponding to that. So uh, I think so I am okay with this. Uh, so this is our base query. Uh, this is our basically main query. So which is basically giving us a result or uh, maybe let's uh, let's uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, yeah so i'm just time period uh, time period or time period is equal to maybe just for a single day just for a single day Uh, so, uh, so we are just looking at the product purchase for a single day. Uh, so that is how we have mentioned in the uh, in the time period. So in, in our case, we need not look at our time range picker because we are basically uh, using the arguments earliest and latest. Uh, so for the 24 hour duration, we can see these are the product IDs which has the most number of the purchases uh, in, in a single day or in the duration of the 24 hours. So for example, uh, now I all, uh, now let's say we also intend to do uh, results. Uh, for example, we also intend to append the results you know uh, for for uh, for the topmost purchases of the entire duration topmost purchases for the entire duration so i will be uh, so let us use the append as a command and uh, okay so append and uh, i will be uh, now again we have already looked at a sub search so maybe search so for example i will be copying the same index and same source type and maybe this is also so for example here yeah, so I copied that. So uh, we will be looking at the entire time duration. So I need not specifically mention the earliest and latest. But for example, if you are looking at one particular week, uh, feel free to basically, you know, uh, pass on the arguments earliest and latest, whichever is appropriate. So in, in my case, it is quite okay. So we are again looking at 
टॉप मोस्ट परचेज लिमिट इज टॉप टॉप टू परचेज राइट एक्शन इज इक्वल टू एंड जस्ट गिव मी अस या सॉरी फॉर दैट सो अगेन वी आर लुकिंग एट टॉप टू परचेज फॉर द एंटायर ड्यूरेशन सो अगेन द प्रोडक्ट आई डी प्रोडक्ट आई डी प्रोडक्ट आई डी एंड अगेन वी आर नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन दर्सेंटेज एज ऑफ नाउ सो लेट से फॉल्स uh okay so uh, maybe uh, just you know uh, uh, to make a difference eval uh, time period a uh, time period sorry for that uh, time period is equal to maybe all time all time all time uh, so that is okay and maybe i we can uh, yeah hopefully it works yeah so for for example you know uh, so uh, so basically we are looking at uh, with the help of the append command so first of all we uh, basically uh, retrieve the data for the topmost purchases for a single day which is 42 and 41 respectively and again uh, we try to look for the you know top two purchases for the all the time right for all the time and we try to basically append the result in the same table and therefore i uh, whatever we have intended so far i think our search basically executed perfectly Uh, so hopefully it makes sense and anyways we are looking at the uh, second uh, one more demonstration to understand the append command uh, you know uh, uh, how does it work so let's say so now what happens is we are trying to uh, basically look at the uh, http error codes uh, so status is equal to 5 star so we are basically looking at all the http 500 related codes um, so 5 star and apart from that um, Apart from that, stats, right? Stats, okay. Count, okay. Count, okay. By the, by the status, by status. Okay, stats count by the status. So again, so we have gotten the result for the entire duration as of now. Uh, so uh, with the append command, what we can do is. Uh, what we can do is we can try to look at the results i mean for for maybe for the two consecutive days so uh, first of all uh, let's look at for earliest may earliest is equal to uh, minus 60 d and latest is equal to uh, maybe minus 59 days 59 days so uh, so this we have looked at this particular result now for a single day now for a single day and apart from that uh, just give me a second eval time period is equal to first day okay so this is executed as intended uh, now uh, now what happens is uh, we will append the result uh, we will append the result for the uh, Uh, for the second consecutive day again we will be running the uh, uh, so this is our generating command i can copy the entire syntax here uh, and let's say here also i will make some small modifications so let's try to look for the two consecutive days uh, so here i will be saying it as 59 days and uh, here uh, maybe 58 days so uh, okay so it will again give me the same stats count by status and eval again i will be giving the same thing time a period time sorry for that time period is equal to or this is the second day second day uh, i i hope it works as intended uh, yeah so for example uh, now uh, so basically uh, uh, we have looked at the data how many uh, http 500 error codes we are getting on the first day and the second consecutive day so this is how the result it is it is giving to us so let us try to make some modifications because uh, you know uh, append calls is also one of the command which we will tr we are trying to look at so let's make it a little bit of the modifications however the result will be the same but uh, count as here maybe the first day uh, first day by status and similarly here also uh, let's remove the uh, eval command all together and by status count as uh, count as a second day second day okay second day by status so uh, let us look at the result it, it will give us the same result most probably uh, yeah so for example you can see the results are basically populated in the two different columns first day and second day uh, respectively 
and so for example uh, normally append columns is also working on the similar lines but there is only very slight uh, uh, you know uh, 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 difference so let us look at that so for example if i replace the append command with the append calls uh, so what happens is all the data will be you know a little uh, uh, you can see in the single most column i guess Uh, no, so so for example, now the data is a little more structured, not in a single column as we would have seen in the eval command. But however, now the data looks little more structured. So that is how you know it is little more structured with respect to our last you know last uh, job. Uh, so this is the basically the utility of you know the append columns. Uh, now uh, I think we are at the last phase of our video where, where we will be just ending with uh, you know looking at the demonstration for the append pipe. Uh, so before I go into that, you know I would just like to let you know that append pipe is basically used to calculate the uh, totals with respect to uh, categories, with respect to the products, or with respect to the fields. Okay. So uh, let us try to construct the scenario and then we will try to uh, emphasize on the results. So for example, in our data, I'm just trying to list how many uh, stats count by uh, category ID, category ID and product ID maybe. So uh, let us look at the category ID which are existing in our basically source type first. Come on, come on. Uh, Stats count by category ID. Sorry for that. Uh, made a spelling mistake. So these are the these are the basically categories. Uh, so just remember some of the categories: arcade, shooter, simulation, sports, strategy, and uh, so what happens is uh, uh, now I am trying to list the data with the help of you know category ID as well as product ID. So product ID. So just uh, have a little bit of focus here. Uh, so uh, you know, so we will uh, better get to know. So for example, you can see that there are basically two product IDs which are getting featured into the category accessories. Okay. And similarly for the arcade, you can see the three product IDs fall into the category of the arcade, right? So uh, so what? For example, you can see the uh, count corresponding to one. Uh, you know one, one combination of category ID and the product ID but what if uh, we are interested in the you know cumulative count of the you know entire category arcade or maybe uh, sports let's say or maybe the T uh, let's say so uh, so we want to basically uh, uh, basically you know retrieve the cumulative count for one particular category so how will we do that so here in, in our case we will be using the append pipe uh, sorry for that. Sure. Append, append pipe and append pipe. And now I will be beginning with the stats. Stats uh, count. Sorry. Sum. Stats sum. And our, uh, basically, we are trying to uh, calculate the cumulative count for count. Okay. Uh, sum count as count sum count as count by and we intend to get a cumulative total for the various categories uh, so by category id and then uh, we would also like uh, what happens is with the eval command we are basically try to uh, you know uh, uh, make it a little more comprehensive and i will i will tell you once the result has come up so eval uh, product id product id is equal to uh, total 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 of all products within uh, category within category right uh, so within category uh, so all, total of all the products within category uh, so uh, i think i am okay here and uh, let's sort as well so sort by a category sorry category id sorry for that and i think here i can yeah uh, so uh, yeah so for for ex uh, i think i think i think i think i did not get the desired result just give me a second just give me a second uh, something is wrong here uh, maybe i am not getting the intended result or may maybe there are too many categories uh, let's let's uh, you know drill down the result for some of the category ids uh, i think the data is populated for category id in 
let's say we are only interested in some of the categories uh, arcade is one of them and maybe the T is one of them and let's say sports is also one of them and hopefully it will give me the result looking for <laughs> yeah so I, I i did some some of the small modifications in the query i think uh, there is a typographic uh, i mean there is a typo there i mean so for example uh, so i think i am getting the results but however uh, i just want to list the cumulative total just below uh, just below the uh, you know for the category name arcade okay so maybe i can just you know end our sub search here and uh, let's try to do that okay so this is the intended result we have gotten so so for example this is what we are looking at so for example append pipe uh, we can use uh, for the cumulative totals or the grand totals we can also you know list the total grand total as well for the append pipe however we need to use one more append pipe in order to do that so uh, this is how you know i think we have completed all the scenarios which was intended for this video and i uh, hopefully you find this particular video useful and resourceful and uh, have a nice day have a nice holiday and take care of yourselves and see you in the next thank you